you know, uh, we've gone down a long, long, long path in this company. And I think as we stop here for a moment, we should stop and just give recognition that this is our 65th year. I could tell you a whole bunch of numbers about how many companies fail in two years or five years or 10 years, but that's not relevant because of all of the companies that have been around in all of that time, we stand out as number one. There's nobody that has done what we have done, nobody that has achieved what we have achieved. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you on a little walk. My goal today is to go back over those 65 years and point out major milestones, big task, because there have been many. So being a pragmatic guy, I started with this. I said, well, make a timeline. Timelines are cool, everybody understands timelines, but quickly it became a big mess because by the time I got this far along, I had missed a lot of things and started populating it in there and said, no, this isn't really gonna work. There's just too many things that we could put in this timeline, too many milestones. So I decided to break it down to just eight that I chose. Maybe they're not the same ones you would choose, I don't know, but they're certainly the ones that I would choose and we're gonna, I'm just gonna take you through those and give you a reason as to why there are milestones, but not just milestones in the company, but milestones maybe in the industry, or milestones in science, or milestones in academia, in the universities and educational system, even in a regulatory sense. You know, we do things differently than other people do. Uh, Charlotte mentioned Japan, one thing I have to tell you, you know, that we were the first company ever to be allowed to sell a dietary supplement in a gelatin capsule in Japan. Because when we got there, it was against the law. So what we did is we just sat down, had a conversation with them, and after a while, the Ministry of Health said, well, yeah, that makes sense. So we were the very first company ever allowed to do that. So that's the sort of tenaciousness we have about what we believe in and the sort of evidence we have behind what we do. So let me start here by talking about milestone number one. That would be when the company started in 1958 and the emergence of Trianan into the marketplace. Trianan is the result of some uh, investigations that were being conducted in a Southern California hospital looking into the causes of chronic fatigue. And it emerged as a chronic fatigue fighting cellular nutrition enhancing dietary supplement that became the foundation of what we know today as Formula 4, but in this case, as you see back there, the Neolife food supplement. That's important for a couple of reasons. One, because it's, that's sort of the emergence of the idea of whole food nutrition for supplementation purposes. It's the emergence of the idea of focusing on how your cells use nutrients to determine how much and how well they're gonna serve you. And finally, it's important because it represented a, a sort of a change of mindset in the whole entire industry. At this sort of genesis point, the rest of the industry went, oh, wow, we never thought of that. So very, very important. And I'm not gonna try to sell you on the product. I think you guys know about the product and I'll be up here for days if I start down that path. That's uh, not always a good thing. So, but this is milestone number one to me. It starts right off by making an impact on the marketplace by creating an opportunity for people to enjoy the benefits of nutrition in a way that they'd never been able to enjoy them before. Now let's talk about milestones in science. Again, there are many, many, many milestones in science. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but we've, uh, we've done a lot of science over the years. But there's two things I think that stand out in terms of milestones of science from the, from the company perspective. First is Dr. First, Dr. Arthur First, um, deciding to join us in our quest for optimal health and nutrition and disease prevention. It was important because Dr. First was a person who had spent his entire life, started the cancer chemotherapy laboratory and stuff like that, spent his entire life trying to correct cancer or treat cancer then decided that the best course was to try to prevent it. And his goals for prevention, back when he made that change, the rest of the scientific community and medical community were saying no, no, because there was a word in the law. The law said, 1937 Food and Drug Act said you can't say prevention. Didn't make any sense, but nevertheless, that's where the industry and the medical community was. So when he came across, that was a big step. It brought with it a lot of 
viability. He took a few spears from his uh, contemporaries, but brought a lot of viability. But most importantly, when he told the company that he wanted to expand the science here and start the scientific advisory board and turn the product destiny over to a group of scientists, that was the biggest thing that could happen because what it did, it was the first time in the industry. You know, in, in the, our industry, there was nobody that was science-led. Matter of fact, science was hard to come by back then. But there was nobody that was science-led. So when we started down this path, we took this quiet, you know, Northern California company, little tiny Northern California company, and we moved it up to being one of the most prolific producers of current contemporary peer-reviewed scientific information out there. We just kept delivering and kept delivering and we won the trust and the faith and the belief of the scientific community in the process. And along the way, we brought a lot of what you might call influencers along with us who decided that, well, maybe there was something to the ideas that this little tiny Northern California company had. Maybe we need to work on science because believe me, there wasn't a lot of it there back then. Here's another one. Milestones and in innovation. You know, again, that's, we do that like all the time. It's something we do all the time. We're always, innovation and evolution go hand in hand, right? You innovate something and then you evolve it and you re-innovate it and re-innovate it and re-innovate it. So we're doing that all the time. Things that we studied and learned in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s is constantly improved. And what you see here is, is five that I'd like to draw attention to. The first one there is protein instantizing and protoguard. You know, when we first got in the idea of delivering um, protein supplements back in the 1960s, there were some on the market, but they were terrible. They were terrible. They weren't very soluble. I mean, you couldn't mix them up in anything. And they were handled so brutally that a lot of the amino acid potential of those products was lost. You know, so we began this process of understanding if you're going to do this, how do you maximize that? And found out that in the blenders you use, the speed with which the blender moves generates friction and that friction generates heat that can denature your proteins. No one was thinking about that. But we tested on the way in, tested on the way out. Yeah, there you go. We found that light and heat and moisture were all things that you needed to control in the manufacturing processes, which is what you see in this instantizing. And that brought us along to the idea of the protoguard process, where we are able to take very, very high quality protein uh, ingredients and blend them together in a way so that when they get in your body, they're absorbed and put in your amino acid pools almost instantly. Not quite, it takes a little while to get through your digestive tract, but very, very quickly. That's all part of, of the process here. Another one, you see that artificial stomach? I talk about that a lot. It's about making sure that knowing what things happen when you put them into your stomach. You know what that's about? We talk about it being the breakdown of that, but it's really an industry's first attempt, our first attempt, and the industry's first attempt to maximize bioavailability. Because if you give somebody a dietary supplement, or anything else for that matter, then it doesn't break down and disperse it's not going to be available. It's not going to be absorbed. And, you know, back in the day, there were a lot of companies putting out these wonderful little tablets and things like that that we called clinkers. You know why they were called clinkers, right? You got to see them again the next morning in the toilet. Because they didn't break down. They're like a stone. You ever swallow a stone? It's not going to break down. They didn't have any that. So this device allowed us to control that and develop compression technology. And you can't compress these things too quick because they make heat. So you have to control compression and you want them to stay solid in the bottle but disintegrate in the body. So a big, big, big milestones when we, uh, when we achieve that. Another one here was our lipid extraction, bioactive extraction technology you see there in the middle. You know, when we started down that path, this stuff didn't exist. No one was trying to figure out how you get lutein out of spinach leaves. I mean, we know it was there and that people needed it because the evidence said so, but no one knew how to get it out. There weren't even standards of identity on, a, on scientific equipment that would allow you to say, yeah, that's lutein. Okay. But we worked with universities and institutions and organizations all around the world and developed that technology and the ability to identify it. 
and start that process. This is way before the current industry who is saying we've got bioactives. This is way before they even dreamed of the idea. And they still don't have the technology that we have. They still haven't caught up. I don't know that they ever will. Okay. Another one you see here is, is glycemic response control. Who knew sugar in your bloodstream was going to be important? Who knew? We knew. You know, we knew that how sugars enter your body and how your body responds, the amount of glucose and the, and the insulin that that stimulates and the long term of doing that day after day, year after year for decades, what the implications were. We understood that. So we set about developing a technology that allowed us to give you a tool by which you can manage your glycemic response. How carbohydrates enter your body, how much of an insulin spike you get, and how to manage that every day for the rest of your life. People that don't manage that well, you know what they're called? Diabetics. It's when that whole thing gets out of control that everything goes wacky, right? That simple thing, when blood sugar gets out of control, the rest of the thing goes wacky. So we wanted to offer the technology and the understanding for people to understand it from a tool perspective as how they can use it to maximize their health. And then that last one is molecular differentiation. Um, this was an ability to uh, identify a certain unique group of molecules that you want. In that particular case, you're looking at omega-3s. That led us to the fact that, you know, there are eight omega-3s involved in human nutrition. If you get some salmon and you take the oil and you analyze it, you're going to see eight peaks there. When we started this, no one knew what the other peaks were at the end or how to do that. But by the time we were done, not only did we know the peaks, but we could deliver them in a product every single time you take it for year after year after year that would have all of those in it. Again, a, a, a very big, big, big step forward in terms of an innovative milestone. Next one here, milestones in discovery. We have a lot of milestones in discovery. Again, too many to put on here. You know, we discovered through research that if you take cruciferous compounds and you consume them and they get in your body, they have the ability to upregulate what's called phase two enzymes. Phase two enzymes are your cell's natural defense. Your cells aren't defenseless, okay? Your cells have defenses in there. It's just when you don't give them a very good diet, you compromise their defenses, sort of like your immune system, bad diet, weak immunity, right? Bad diet, weak cellular defenses. So we found in testing that we can take these cruciferous compounds and extract them, put them in organs, put them in a thing, send them to a test, do a National Cancer Institute protocol test on cells and see that you could upregulate phase two enzymes. No one had done that, certainly not in our industry. People in science in general were surprised by that. But that's one of many things. We've done many of those, but I'd like to point to these two milestones because of what they represent. You know, carotenoid complex is a milestone because it, was the first and only product that delivered all those carotenoids in a way that your body can utilize so quickly, complete carotenoid supplementation. We know that carotenoids are fundamental to how your bodies work, okay? They're not only antioxidants, but they play roles in anti-inflammation, they promote immune function, they defend your cells, protect your heart, protect you from sunlight, all sorts of things. They're fundamental to health. So, but when we introduce that, a couple of things came out that made it such a, a milestone. One is it was the first product of its kind. Second, it was the first product of its kind that had actual clinical evidence of bioavailability, meaning that when you took it, it got in your bloodstream. Okay, that was good. And that also it was bioutilized. Now, it didn't just sit there in your bloodstream, your body utilized it. Okay, two really important things that had never been investigated for this sort of thing before. Then we, because of that work that we did, we got these guys from the USDA's Human Nutrition Research Center all excited, and they came and did some work with us to prove that it protects your heart and defends your cells and boosts your immune system, which has, again, never been shown for a dietary supplement. As far as I know, maybe never been shown since then either. Now remember, this is, we're doing this work back in the 90s. It's not like we did it last week or last year or last decade or since the turn of the millennium, right? It's back in the 90s. And we did these things for years and years and years. Also, I think that the, uh, the arrival of Salmon Oil Plus on the market is another one of those discovery things. It's deep into, it's not just what it means to have eight omega-3 fatty acids. That's cool and important, very, very important because they have synergistic roles they play that, that they need to be there to do that job. 
But again, it was the fact that you had this small company develop this really exclusive technology, this ability to identify and stabilize all eight of those things and deliver them in a dietary supplement that was proven bioavailable and proven bioutilized and proven to be taken out of the blood, taken up in red blood cell membranes and kick out inflammatory fats. Because inflammatory fats in cell membranes is one of the big drivers of aging and disease. So here's this little Northern California company proved that. We did bioavailability studies. We showed they were cardioprotective. We showed that there was inflammation reduction. You could actually change your inflammatory index, which has now become sort of a thing. But back in the early 2000s, people said, huh, what's that? But most importantly is that we showed that the presence or absence of these things is fundamental to how your body heals itself. In the absence of these eight omega-3 fatty acids, your body will not get full healing potential. And, you know, you never receive the optimal health if you are not fully healed. So when you have these little damage things and they go on, you can go around and be, think I'm feeling fine, but your background biochemistry isn't fully healed. Yet we were able to prove that in conjunction with some research that the SAB, in particular Dr. Kruge, did with a fellow from uh, um, UC Berkeley, Karsten Groner, amazing, amazing people. And all these sort of publications you see down here on the pile, these are two of the most tested and proven products in the world. Far and away more than our competition, well, we have no competition, far and away what our competitors would have. Um, and if we continue to do just that sort of thing. So talking about milestones and evidence, we'll talk about this for a moment. Um, you know, when we first started in the industry, evidence was thin. Everybody sort of looked at the latest publication that said vitamin C did something and then they could claim what vitamin C did because they didn't have any evidence about their vitamin C, but they needed to make a claim, right? Because how are you going to get people's attention if you don't tell them it's beneficial? So when we started down that path, there just wasn't a lot of evidence. And in conversations I remember having with uh, Jerry and Bob Brassfield back in Geneva, Switzerland in a bar, we were just having lunch, folks, just having lunch. Um, we had this little conversation about what do you think we would need? What would, what would really help us get there? And the, the, what came up was, is we would like, they would like, to make sure we have evidence that our products work. And we would like that evidence to be generated by the Scientific Advisory Board, but more importantly, we would like it to be accepted and generated by third parties, people that are not involved in the company. And so we set off down that path, you know, we had a vision and we had a plan, and our vision manifested itself in this and much more. At that time, um, we didn't know how we were going to get here. We only knew we could. You know, it wasn't so important that we had the, everything nailed down. It was that we knew that we could get there. We had this confidence. We had this believability. We just knew that it was just an untapped resource. Go companies and other people hadn't gone there because it's expensive and it takes time. But we had, thanks to Jerry and the crew, we had time and money. They allowed us to go change, chase these things. This is, so that today, what it, what it results with, as you see that one that says, uh, the little one with the black cover, says carotenoids and human health. That was a New York Academy of Science event in 1991. And all the way through there, you come all the way up here to the, to the New England Journal of Medicine. In that process, our, we repeated our science, and by the end of that, our research was getting recognition in the New England Journal of Medicine for the level of excellence that it represented of our little tiny Neolife's company of getting research. And when they cited evidence in there, ours was the only human clinical evidence because the others had done it with animals or dog ticks or something, I don't know what. Milestones in sourcing, you know, we've always been very particular about what goes on, what goes into our products and how to take care of that and make sure that it's exactly what we need it to be every, every single time. If you're going to make one thing, it's one thing. If you're going to make a hundred million of something and span that over 10 years or something like that, it's a whole different ballgame. And that's why we were so focused on sourcing. We wanted to get away from 
you know, the sort of chemical sourcing that most of the industry was relying on, and even get away from the natural things that a lot of our competitors, our competition would use, um, that aren't really natural to the human body. You know, we have this based in nature thing. We take that seriously, by the way. We have this based in nature thing that said, really, if you're going to figure out what you want to give somebody, give them something that they can get from nature. So we developed this idea of focusing in on this, what I like to call human natural. There's a lot of natural products out there. I mean, you can, you know, all know Blake's Leotrispora. One of our competitors uses Blake's Leotrispora. It's an asexual fungus. It's a source of, their source of carotenoids, or actually their source of beta carotene. Not something that we could do. We never sat down to a steaming bowl of asexual fungus before. <laughs> Let's talk about milestones and assurance. All of those things I just told you about, you know, the natural sources of our ingredients, you can't just take what you get from the supermarket or something like that. You have to have a supply chain that is in depth. We have control over our supply chain literally from the ground that they're grown in or the seed that they're harvested from or whatever that might be, the grass that the cows eat for the dairy proteins, whatever that might be. We have that all put together in a way so that we can track it all the way from those sources all the way out to the consumer. And you can see it through our, through our integrated system. If you look at the batch code number on a product, that batch code number will take you all the way back to all of the ingredients and where they came from, for us anyway. But that sort of assurance was critical. It was something that we had to have. It's also a way that we manage to um, make sure that things don't sneak into the product line. Right? Make sure that somebody doesn't slide in a bunch of Russian carrots or something. Russian scrub carrots. So, so we know everything. Every one of our suppliers has been with us a long time. We, they, every time they come in, they, they have to qualify. Hello, Frank, I know I've known you for 30 years. Where's your evidence? It's called trust but verify, right? If they're going to be a supplier, we're going to trust them. But we're going to verify that we can continue to trust them. It's not because we don't trust them. It's because we don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very, very important differences. Milestones in quality. You know, quality is an amazing thing. There's a lot of standards out there. We do 350 some markets in the world, and every one of those markets has got their own idea of what's good and safe and clean and pure and things like that. They've got their own um, sort of standards and goals. But what we find is that when we look at all of those, when we started going around the world and spreading it around, we found that our standards already exceeded all of those. We never, when we went to the Japanese and said, hello, Japanese, and we gave them all this information, and they said, okay, good, right? Those were our standards that got embraced. You know, we met their standards, but they were our standards that got embraced because our standards already exceeded their standards. Same when we go all over the world. It enables us to say, this little statement here, which I think is a, a very, very powerful sort of milestone, is Neolite products meet or exceed the quality standards for purity, potency, and consistency of every major regulatory authority in the world. Because our standards for ourselves are higher than theirs. Right? It's always been that way. They didn't have standards for, you know, carotenoid oleoresins, because we developed the technology and thus developed the standard. So 65 years of major milestones, wow. You know, big, big, big story. But I want to tell you a little bit about the 65 years of impact that they've had. I impact in ways maybe you don't, don't realize. For example, impact on the industry. You know, Neolife is a pioneer of the industry. When we started in 1958, the industry was that tall. <laughs> Just a little baby thing. And like little baby things, it didn't know much, and it was unruly, and had to be taught. Okay. So we spent a lot of time doing that sort of stuff. We were health freedom champions because this little tiny industry was being beat up on by the FDA, the big bad FDA. They said, no, no, you can't sell dietary supplements. No, 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 you can't give people information about nutrition. And no, there's just no room for that, right? That's got to be in the pharmacy. So they wanted to take vitamin C and make it a pharmaceutical. Of course, big pharma said, yay. You know, we can do that. But Neolife was right there on the front lines fighting those FDA wars, having that sort of impact.
we were a founding, early founding member of the Council for Responsible Nutrition and the, own, and the first multi-level marketing company to receive, be given a seat on their um, scientific advisory council, senior scientific advisory council, which is a big prestigious thing in itself. But through that, we, I, and some of our other neolifers walked the halls of Congress talking to congressional representatives and their staffs and senators and their staffs and telling them the true story of dietary supplementation because they weren't getting the true story from the FDA. Okay. The FDA had their story and it wasn't our story. And the FDA wanted their story to be rules and we didn't want their story to be rules. We wanted it to be based on truth. And through that, we participated in sponsoring the two key uh, national regulations that govern the marketplace. One, the Nutrition Labeling and Education Act there, and finally the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act. And through those, we created a platform by which the rest of the industry could grow and prosper, knowing that you weren't going to get slammed by some FDA guy coming around the corner and jumping on you. Not that they don't try to do that still. And I understand what they're up to. There's a lot of perpetrators of BS in the marketplace, right? That would be but think about everybody. But, and I know that they need to be regulated. We, you know, it always irritates me when I watch Fox News and that guy with the vegetables and fruit. Come. No evidence, just, oh yeah, come on, sell, buy this, sell this. So, um, big, big milestone for Neolife to be, have this much impact on industry, right? Another one, impact on science, all of that stuff I told you about, all of that scientific stuff that we did with all of those people, these and many others. That was an impact on science because that sort of evidence didn't exist for dietary supplements. You know, we had to sort of showcase those ideas. But in the process of doing that, we won the respect and confidence of major organizations and people all over the world. Some of them you see here, the USDA researchers and Linus Pauling and the FASEB and FENREG and all of these sorts of organizations who were reticent until they met us and got to know us and saw the dedication we put into doing good science and saw it getting published in peer-reviewed journals and said, okay, come in, you're one of us, right? You can be, you can play here because we trust you. A big deal. Here's another one you probably don't think about, but the impact on ac academia. You know, the, the, where people learned about nutrition is in school. The problem is that the nutrition that was being taught in school, besides the fact that it was just a tiny amount, was not very comprehensive and not very contemporary. It was something that some professor thought of 40, 50 years ago and got tenured and 40, 50 years later still teaching the same thing. So what we did is we got this idea of we draw a lot from academia, a lot from the sciences. And so we wanted to start giving back. So one of the ways we started giving back is by sponsoring new young researchers so that people who were coming up through university would get to hear the Neolife story rather than miss the opportunity. We've done that 29 times through the University of San Francisco, given out 29 scholarships to young emerging um, science and medical students. And it's had a big impact. They now know. Thank you. They all know, now they now know that, hey, that nutrition stuff can be real and can be important. It's all about the company that's behind it, okay? So, and if you see this, we rose up through all of these organizations. I wanted to just point this out. That, you know, FINREG is, uh, we give Young Achievers Awards out, three or four of those every year for a number of years. And those are people doing really great research in polyphenols and flavonoids and stuff like that in the, in the scientific community, in the academic community. So we highlight them and give them a little spotlight and a pack on the bad, a little recognition, a little cash, it always helps. And, and we've been doing that for 25 years now. We were the founding sponsor of FENREG 25 years ago. This is the 20... And you know how important flavonoids and polyphenols are? You hear about them all the time today. Back in the 90s when we were doing the work and starting this foundation, everybody said, what are those? Why do we care? We knew why we cared. They were in nature's blueprint. <laughs> we had to care. Nature put them in there. We just didn't understand why. So our goal was to understand why. But over here you see the 
you know, we rose to the highest levels of acceptance. Underneath the Stanford Health Library, where we did a few, you know, Arthur first lectures on nutrition and disease prevention. Um, you see that picture there with that, you know that lady standing next to Dr. First there? That was the Surgeon General of the United States at the time, Jocelyn Elders. Dr. Elders is a very good friend of Dr. First. You know, they'd done some work together. She's also a big friend of Neolife, a proponent of what we did. She stood in front of the group there at Stanford University making this presentation and said, essentially, not in these words, I won't put words in her mouth, but essentially, what Neolife does is we're what we all should be doing. Okay. So I don't know that you know the impact that we've had, but this is the most important thing, is the impact that we've had on people. From that little bottle of supplements that we started out with in 1958 all the way up to the pro-vitality packs that we have today that deliver this abundance of nutrients to launch your body every day. We have been empowering millions. If you look at that picture over at the side there, the black and white picture, everybody know who that is? Say that again. Say it again. Yes. And you notice this other picture here? You see who's in that other picture? It's the family. Right? Irene Rader and her grandchildren. I, I do that because it shows the test of time that we're dealing with here. When the Scientific Advisory Board, we always look at things and say, not only how good is it, but how good is it going to be if it's used every day of your life for the rest of your life? Because it's family. It's not like we're marketing to unknown numbers of people out in the marketplace. It's family. And we take that very seriously. So I'd like to leave you with this one thought. First of all, I have to commend Dr. Beck on her launch today, product launch today. I am. I, I have to confess to being the sock drawer testimony. <laughs> drinking that stuff, go in the closet, you know, I think I'm going to do this and this, and pretty soon you come out two hours later having done everything. A moment of clarity. Okay? But the team that she's put together and the team that's behind us is going to continue this trend for 65 years into the future, for sure. This is, it's not like this is an end point. Don't think of it in this, at this point. This is a milestone, not the last milestone, just the most recent milestone. And there will be milestones and milestones to come. And somebody is gonna get up here 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, hopefully me, <laughs> and tell you about all those milestones and we can be very proud. Thank you very much.